seven small dots on five lines. You shift their position, the E here, the G there, and as if by magic, you have music. To me, it was simple, or so I thought. How can a means of expression innate to humankind ever be that simple? How can a form of art lauded by gods and humans ever be easy? A journey through notes and sounds on staves and sheet music may well be magical and dreamlike, but easy it is not. And the reason it's not easy is because we each have our own emotional palette and through our individual music compose our own unique work, employing sounds which colour both laughter and tears, the skip of a heartbeat and moments of pained anguish and anger and joy. Furthermore, these works need not be strictly personal, but quite often are collective visions of one society at large. And this was always the case, both then and now, and will continue to be so in the future. It was in this way that I also set off on a journey in search of the musical history of my country, on a quest for my very own Ithaca, a melodious Ithaca, beginning with Apollo and the Muses and Orpheus and Eurydice, along paths of musical exuberance which would eventually lead me to the present. So, fellow musical time travellers, please step aboard. Our destination, Cyprus. The time, antiquity. The music of Cyprus in ancient times is strongly influenced by that of mainland Greece. This influence, as attested to by available historical sources, seems to have begun towards the end of the 15th century BC with the appearance of the first Mycenaeans on the island. The representations we see on the various vessels of the time indicate that the musical instruments used both in Cyprus and Greece were similar, if not the same. Music was not only an integral part of all aspects of public and private life, but also enjoyed a close relationship with other forms of art, such as theatre. Leafing through the pages of history, one ascertains that through the ages, Cyprus was subjected to a number of conquerors. Moving forward in time, we reach the Byzantine era. Continuing our musical journey, Byzantine and Demotic music. During the Byzantine era, Demotic music and Demotic songs formed an extension, an extrapolation, if you will, of ecclesiastical music. Through our sojourn, one discovers that Byzantine and Demotic music have bequeathed to us rich aspects of cultural expression and rhythmic variety and constitute an essential element of the ethnomusicological identity of the island. <laughs> Research and study, one discovers that preserved in Cyprus's Byzantine and Demotic music are elements of ancient Greek music. The decades long research, based on the tireless efforts of notable researchers, has contributed to the preservation and recording of the rich cultural treasure which is our Demotic poetry. <laughs> Σε τορούμπου τον καμόν 
να κρούζω μέσα στο λαβορό που με ρίξε σκαλί μου ένα σου γελιο πάντα. Cyprus then, a crossroads of cultures, a bridge between east and west. Given its extremely significant geopolitical position, it was always a strategic objective of many conquerors. The Byzantine era was followed successively by the Frankish, Venetian and Ottoman rules of the island. Throughout all those years, the musical activity of the Cypriot people revolved primarily around ecclesiastical music heard in churches and monasteries and demotic music performed on religious holidays and at fates and weddings. During the Frankish and Venetian rules of the island, one also encounters the music heard in the court of the nobility, which mostly expresses the spirit of the Western musical writing of the time. Cyprus, a place whose turbulent course through history had a strong influence on the musical life of the island. Further unravelling the strands of history, we reach the British domination of Cyprus and the gradual blossoming and propagation of Western European musical tradition. Historical and political events which took place both in Cyprus and in neighbouring countries contributed to the further development of European music. The Russian Revolution, the Armenian Genocide, the Asia Minor Calamity, all forced a significant number of musicians of note to seek refuge in Cyprus. Arriving on the island, at times individually and at times in waves, these people took on a leading and substantial role in the musical happenings of Cyprus. During the 1920s and 30s, Cyprus experienced a rapid musical development which created those conditions necessary for the further development of high musical forms on the island through the formation of symphony orchestras and the staging of Cypriot musical productions such as operas, oratorios and musical reviews. 